The day my mother didn't cry, I shuddered to recall that dreadful night in December when my mother knocked at the door of my bedroom in the dead of night, inquiring where the washroom was. She looked disoriented and totally confused. Unable to understand the cause of her abnormal behavior, I thought she was still in a semi-sleep state and showed her where the washroom was. But even after coming out of the washroom, she was unable to find her way back to her bedroom. My sister and I figured out that something was seriously amiss. The next day, we took her to a nearby nursing home for diagnosis and treatment. She was immediately referred to a neurosurgeon, and after an MRI scan, it was confirmed that she had been suffering from brain cancer. The report showed certain gray patches, which the doctor referred to as clots, which must have affected her memory severely. As she is old, she cannot regain her memory, the doctor informed. He, however, assured that further damage to the brain can be caused by drugs. In such a way, the end of my mother started slowly. As the disease worsened, she forgot everything, lost control of her body functions, and finally failed to recognize anyone except my sister and me, who used to take care of her like a mother taking care of her baby. We used to feed her, dress her, bath her, brush her hair, and help her fall asleep. For my sister and me, she was like a little child. Our world revolved around her. We used to play with her and tease her. We even celebrated her 80th birthday with a grand cake cutting ceremony attended by our friends in Kolkata. It was a moment of happiness for her as she kept smiling at everyone greeting her on her birthday without knowing whose birthday it was. Though somebody wished her birthday wishes, she promptly responded by wishing them the same. It was interesting to know that even after the destruction of her brain cells, the disease could not take away the basic courtesies from her acquired during her training as a telephone operator a long time back. She had never forgotten to express her sincere thanks whenever we helped her with little things. The loud sound of a body hitting the ground suddenly awakened us. We looked around and we found our mother missing from her bed. In a swift motion, my sister jumped from the bed and dashed out of the room to find her lying flat, face down on the floor, motionless. Her forehead was badly injured and bled heavily, but there was virtually no reaction from her. We lifted and laid her on the bed. We together gently cleansed the wound and inquired whether it was hurting. She told us that she was okay in a firm manner. We knew it hurt so bad, but there was no sign of pain on her face, no tears in her eyes, just a plain disoriented look devoid of any emotion. The disease took away all her feelings and dried up her tear glands. I still remember those instances when my mother lied to me. This incident couldn't be erased from my mind because her decision did dismay me. After graduating with a bachelor's degree, I then continued to do a master's degree and got a scholarship. I finally worked in a company. The salary was also good. I thought of bringing my mother there too, but my lovely mother didn't want to bother her daughter. She was not ready to leave the house. Looking at her state, I cried silently. Oh God, I said to myself, is this my mother who used to get tears in her eyes? even for a faint discomfort? She was emotionally so sensitive that even if my father gave her a stern look, it would bring her to tears. Such was her crying that my father used to tease her by calling her a river that never stops flowing. The day she passed away as her body was being carried in an ambulance, there were unexpected showers for a few minutes, as if the heavens had cried for her as she forgot to cry. May God bless her soul. Moral. Life is fleeting, and the love and care we give to others are what truly matter. Our memories may fade, and our bodies may weaken, but the kindness we show and the bonds we form remain forever etched in the hearts of those we leave behind. Cherish your loved ones for time 
Wait for no one. And the moments you share today become the memories you hold on to tomorrow.